Hey guys, welcome to Chaos Core Tech. I'm Garrett, and I think we're past due for a Tinkercad tutorial. So for this video, I figured we'd talk about splitting objects into multiple pieces. And that has a few purposes. Um, one of the most obvious is to split a bigger object up into smaller pieces so you can print it. And now some of you may already know how to do this, but I have gotten a few questions on it, and I'm gonna show you a couple of techniques that I use to make uh, life a lot easier while doing this. So even if you know how to do this, stick around, you might find out something you didn't know. So let's get into it. Okay, so here we are back in Tinkercad, and these are just the test files that I've used for my videos previously. So if you're wondering what any of these are or just looking for other Tinkercad tutorial videos, check the little I up in the corner. Um, or down in the description if you're on mobile. I'll put the playlist of all of my Tinkercad tutorial videos. And so let's get into it. Um, now, as I said before, a pretty common function that is needed when you're making 3D prints is to split an object up. And sometimes it's just not feasible to do that in a slicer. So let's talk about how to do it here. So let's take this object right here. Um, as it is, there's really no need to split it but let's duplicate it just so we have a copy of it and then um, elongate it so if we look at that right there those overhangs would not print without supports um, so if we wanted to print this without supports we'd have to split the object up most likely um, down the middle and then print it um, on those edges so let's talk about how to do that okay now i found that the easiest way to do this is just to grab a box set it somewhere outside of the object and then make it a hole then make sure it's tall enough to fit around and I move it down just a little bit so it so I can make sure that it gets the full object in there and then what I do is just drag it out to about halfway through the model so right there we're encompassing half now I duplicate this box and then grab the outside most um, manipulator so I can just drag it through and as you get here and cross this line it actually goes to the other side so now you have boxes um, on exactly half of the model and that's what we want. Now basically what we're going to do is duplicate this um, object inside of here and then group it with these boxes accordingly and that will just leave us with um, two sides of this object. So pretty simple but right now we're faced with a problem. We can't select this um, object in there and there I found two really easy ways of doing this um, first of all you can just select everything and then hold shift and deselect the two boxes and then you're just left with the object in the middle but sometimes that's not the most feasible because sometimes you have a lot of things in there and it would take forever to deselect and um, it can be kind of tough so one really cool feature of Tinkercad that um, I have found you can actually zoom into objects so Right now we are inside the box. And now I can just click on this object and come back out and it's selected. Now when I started um, using this program, I didn't think I would use this technique very often, but it's actually one of the biggest things I've found. Um, and it, it has made my life a lot easier. So um, if you're ever dealing with something like that, just go ahead and zoom into the object and you can do it with pretty much any objects. Now if we take this, click on it, and we can zoom back out and we'll duplicate it. And how I'm duplicating things is hitting Control D, or I'm assuming Command D if you're on a Mac. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that. Otherwise you can come up to Edit and Duplicate right there. But be careful because if you go to Design and Duplicate, it'll make a copy of this whole file and I'll have to reload, it takes forever. So make sure if you use the menus, click Edit and not Design. And so now we've got everything we need to split this up. So let's zoom back in and just click one of these and then click or shift click one of the sides of the boxes, then click group. So now, as you can see, it's only highlighting half of this box because we've effectively just erased what's over here. So now if we click this one that's exposed right now and then shift click this box and hit group, now we have two um, sides of this model and we can rotate it like this to uh, get it to be printable and now we have no overhangs and everything will go together great and also one thing to keep in mind when you're splitting things like this um, is that your tolerances can be off just a little bit by doing this because especially with this where the two sides or the two bottom 
layers will be um, put together and that can actually cause a little bit of extra material because your bottom layer um, is usually quite a bit thicker than your layer height. Um, so just be aware that it might be off when you do this if it needs to be perfectly exact but it's usually fractions of a millimeter, so it's not even worth mentioning most of the time. But a plus side to this is that this technique can also be used to hide that bottom layer, because um, before, if we were to print it on one of these sides, the bottom layer would be very visible, and you know sometimes that's not desirable. So doing it like this, the bottom layers will be down here, and then say that we glue this together, um, bottom layers won't be visible, but you will have to deal with the seam, so it's your choice there. Okay, so let's move those over and let's take a duplicate of this and say that we wanted to split this up. We can use the same technique, but say that we wanted to split it up in slices. I don't know why you'd want to do this, but let's just use it as, as an example. So first of all, what I'm going to do is bring out a box like I did before. And then we'll make it take up roughly half. So right there, it's encompassing the whole thing. I'm actually going to make it a little bit higher and move it down just to make sure. Then I will duplicate this and move it over. So now we've got two halves. And we can actually keep increasing these halves by creating more boxes around it. So say that we just wanted to create four slices of this. We can just select both of these, control D to duplicate, and then rotate 90 degrees. And then you'll just have to line it back up with um, close to the center. So this is where it can get a little bit tricky because now we have more things that we need to get rid of. Um, so to make life easier on ourselves, let's just start um, getting rid of the chunks. So I know that we need to get this slice right here out. And in order to do that, we're going to take this box right here and this box right here. So what I'm going to do is take those and then um, I'm going to control D to make a duplicate of them. And I'm going to group them. So now I can come in and select one of these doesn't matter which one and then select this we will group and now we can actually move that slice away and then we just repeat that pattern for the other slices so if we want this slice here we just take these two duplicate them group come in and select okay and then we'll group those and then we'll move that slice out and now, if I remember correctly, you don't actually need that box anymore. So let's try to get this slice out. For that one, we'll need to group these two. So we'll duplicate, group, and then come in and shift select one of these. Group, and boom, move that slice out. And then for the final slice, now we can get rid of this guy and we're left with just the two for the final slice. Group those and we've got all of our slices there. So that might seem a little complicated but it's really not too bad. Um, just If you're going to create slices just work on getting slices out. And now I'll leave with one final tip that can help and this goes along with the zooming into the object with the camera. So say that we want to zoom into one of the cylinders back here. So we start zooming in and we realize that the camera stops here. It will not let us zoom any farther. And now of course we could turn the camera around and zoom inside of it, but that's not always the way that we can do it. So one way that we can actually move where the camera is and affect your zoom is to um, look straight at the ground. And as you can see, this is about the point that we're rotating around right here. So that is theoretically where your camera is sitting. So if you just click the middle mouse button and pan over here, I'm actually going to pan a little bit past it. So then I can come down and it'll allow me to zoom right inside of it. So you can actually affect where your camera is to give you better leverage to zoom in faster. And that's something that I use quite a lot when I'm making um, my models and you can probably see that in some of the speed modeling videos that I've put up. Okay well I think that was all I was going to show for this. Uh, hopefully that was helpful and hopefully it wasn't too confusing about any of the things I talked about. I know I kind of rushed through them so um, if you have any questions about any of this make sure you leave a comment down below and I will be sure to answer that. Alright guys well there you have it. Those are some techniques that I use in Tinkercad to split objects into multiple parts. 
So I hope you found this useful, and if there's any other subjects you'd like me to cover, um, things to do in Tinkercad that you're not quite sure how to do, leave me a comment down below and I will definitely do a video about that. And then also in some of my newer 3D printing videos, I've been using Fusion 360. So um, I think I'm going to start doing some tutorials on that and I'll probably start with a uh, transition guide from Tinkercad to Fusion 360. So look forward to that. And then if you guys are wondering what to watch next, check the little eye up in the corner or down in the description if you're on mobile. And then if you thought this video was cool, make sure you like and get subscribed if you're not already. And of course, sharing this video helps me out a ton. All right, guys, thanks for joining me. See you next time.